Never have. I have no interest in it. All right. So we've got <clears throat> we've got chlorine here and we got sodium, right? And we're gonna make sodium chloride. Okay, need to balance my equation. So I've got it balanced. We're determining the mass of sodium chlorine produced when 1.25 moles of chlorine gas react. That means we're not starting out with any of this. And this, we're going to assume what? They didn't tell us how much we had, so we're going to assume that we have an excess amount. Okay? So now we need to figure out what our cloud is. So I'm going to take this value up. I'm going to go through the coefficient, meaning I'm going to divide by that coefficient, and that ends up being 1.25. So then when I bring that down, I go through the coefficient. When I go down, I have to multiply. So I am going to use 2.5 moles of this because 1.25 times 2 is 2.5. Here I'm going to use all of this up. And this guy, I'm going to come down through the coefficient. And I'm going to end up making 2.50 moles. So in the end, when I'm done, I have 2.5 moles here. I don't have any of this left. And I have an excess amount. Now, they did not want to know the moles of NaCl. They wanted to know the mass of NaCl. So I need to take that 2.50 moles. And I'm going to use my handy dandy dimensional analysis. And I know that my mass of NaCl from the periodic table, I've got a sodium at 23 and I've got a chlorine at 50 or 35.5. So if I add those two things together, that gives me 58.5. Now, I only use the coefficients when I am going in and out of the cloud. I am not going to take this value and multiply by two. Okay, do not do that. The only time you use coefficients is going into the cloud and out of the cloud. Okay? You're not touching the cloud figuring this out. So don't do that. Just use the value from the periodic table, the molar mass for sodium chloride. Ignore that too in this step. Got it? Yeah. All right. So 58.5 over 1, because in one mole we have that many grams. And so if I take 58.5 times 2.5, I end up with 146.25 grams of NaCl. With proper sig figs, what would I write down? 146. I need three sig figs to match the three sig figs that we started with. Making sense? All right, moving on. We got our next one here, and apparently I didn't give us enough boxes. Surprise, surprise. Oh, I still didn't. There. Oh, those are just. All right, I also need to balance this, which I think I just need to put a two here and that'll get it balanced. So verify that, make sure I'm right on that one. So TiO2 plus C plus 2Cl2 yields TiCl4 plus CO2. All right, we're starting out with 1.25 moles here. 
this is excess and this is excess because they haven't told us anything and these are both zeros all right then i'm going to take this value and i'm going to go up into the cloud so i'm going to divide by my coefficient so my cloud ends up being a 1.25 now i'm going to bring this down out of the cloud when i come out of the cloud i multiply by the coefficient so i'm going to use 1.25 here i'm going to use 1.25 here i'm going to use 2.50 okay because this is times two I'm going to make, so now we're on the other side of this. So this is where we're going to make stuff. And I screwed that up. We're going to make 1.25 and we're going to make 1.25. Good. All right. So here in the end, I will have none of this left. I'll have an excess amount of each of these. And I'll have made 1.25 and 1.25, okay? So <clears throat> that is not what they wanted to know. They wanted to know how what the mass of this is. So we have to look at our chlorine. They want to know the, how much of this chlorine we're going to need. So I'm going to focus on this section here. So I'm going to need two and a half moles of chlorine. They want to know what the mass of that is. So if I take my chlorine, I'm going to multiply chlorine, which is 35.5 times 2. That's 71. That's 71.0 grams in every one mole. So then my moles will cancel, <clears throat> and that's going to give me my mass. So 2.5 times 71 and I end up with and I need three sig figs so it's going to be 178 grams of Cl2. I do not use this coefficient when I'm calculating this mass. I just focus in on this when I'm calculating molar mass. Yay or nay? Okay. The next section then, we're going to take you through and we're going to show you how to do um, mass to mass. So we're starting with a mass and they want to end with a mass. Okay. So we've got ammonium nitrate is going to produce N2O and water when it decomposes. So we need to start out our equation, ammonium nitrate is going to give N2O plus H2O. Okay, <clears throat> need to balance this guy. So I'm gonna start with a two here. I think that might've done it. Okay, so I got two nitrogens, I have four hydrogens now, and I have three oxygens. Okay, so we got that balanced. So we've got 25 grams of ammonium nitrate. I can't have grams in the holes because it's only moles in the holes. So I've got to figure out what that is. So I'm going to put my grams down here and my moles here. And I'm going to get these values from the periodic table. This is ammonium nitrate. So I've got 28 for my nitrogens. I've got four for my hydrogens and I've got 48 for my oxygen. So that's 80.0 in one mole. So 25 divided by 80 is going to give me 0.3125. And I haven't started any of this. <clears throat> I don't like that three. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Now, I need at least three sig figs in here. I've got four. That's fine. At least means I can't have four. Okay. So I'm going to go and do my cloud now. So I'm going to take 
put it in my cloud because I divided it by one. And now I'm going to bring that down. So I'm going to use up all of this. This is the dividing line between my products and my reactants. So when I go over here, I'm going to be making this stuff. And this one isn't going to be 3.125. It's going to be... Huh? Right, 0.625. Okay, because we have to double this amount. <clears throat> so I'm going to make 0.625 here. I'm going to make 0.3125 here, and I'm not going to have any of this left over. So they wanted to know the mass of the water. So I'm going to take the 0.625 grams, or no, nope, not grams, bad lippy, moles. And I know 18.0 grams in every one mole of water. So that is 11.25, so that's going to come up to 11.3 if I stick with my sig figs. Questions on that guy? Anything not makes sense? All right, I want to skip down to limiting reactants. I think you guys are getting these pretty... Pretty good, pretty well. All right, you ready, you ready, you ready? Okay. So generally one reactant is in excess as the reaction proceeds until all of one of the reactants is used up. When the chemical reaction is carried out in the lab, the same principle applies. Usually one reactant is in excess while the other one is limited. The amount of the product depends upon the reactant that is limited or runs out first. So limiting reactants limit the extent the reaction can have move and they determine how much of the product you're going to make. The other things then are called excess reactants. Okay. Everybody cool with those things? So when you were making pizzas the other day for 11.1, you had something that you ran out of first, right? What was it? You remember? Sauce. sauce. Okay, so your sauce ran out first. That would have been your limiting reactant then. And then all the other stuff, the pizza crust, the cheese, the mushrooms or whatever you had on there those things then would have been your excess reactants does that make sense all right so we are going to run through these i've got the rules up here but i'm going to i think showing you is probably easier than running through the or reading all of that stuff because you're not going to it's not going to make sense until you see it all right, so start with a balanced equation. Okay. We're starting with that. We need, now we don't have, one of these is a, one of these is excess. We just don't know which one. We've got to figure that out. And I'm going to show you, it's easy to figure out. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do that. But before we can do any of that, we have to convert these into moles because we have to have moles into holes. Okay. So this 200, I'm going to have to divide by S8. So 8 sulfurs, 32.1 times 8 is going to be 256. 
0.8. So 200 divided by that. Okay, so this, and you must have at least sig figs, uh, three sig figs in here. Okay, make sure. Don't get lazy on me. You need to have at least three significant figures. All right, then my chlorine, I'm going to have my 100.0 divided by point or 71.0, and that's going to give me my moles of the chlorine. So that ends up being 1.413 1 sig figs. All right. Everybody up with me now. You got everything written down. You can pay attention to what I'm about ready to do. This is, this is how you're going to figure out which one of these limits you. You ready? We're going to take this value up and we're going to create a cloud. So this cloud is going to be 0.779. Everybody cool with that? I'm then going to take this guy up. I'm going to go through his coefficient. And I'm going to create another cloud. So I'm going to have two clouds now. You have as many clouds as you have reactants that have starting mole amounts. So 0 0.141 divided by 4, that's going to give me 0 0.352. Everybody got that written down. Or are you actually writing this down? Are you playing with your calculator? So, well, it's not working. So just put it down. Okay. Do you have this written down? Do you have two clouds? Okay. All right. Everybody caught up with me. Now, at this point, I'm going to look at all the clouds I have, and I'm going to get rid of all but the smallest one. So I'm getting rid of every cloud that is not the smallest cloud. And then I'm just going to proceed the way I was, the way I did before. This is my cloud now. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to use up 0.352. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to use up 1.41. And I'm going to bring this down. This is the other side of my reaction. So I'm going to make 1.41. <clears throat> so in the end, I don't have any of this left. And I have 1.41 of this made. I need to figure out what this is. What do I do? I subtract. <clears throat> So I have some of this left over. Just like when you made your pizzas, you had cheese and you had pie, pizza crust and you had other stuff left over, right? <coughs> All right. <coughs> they want to know the mass of this stuff. So we've got the moles of it. I need to figure out the mass. So I've got to figure out my grams per mole. So that's going to be 64.2 plus 71. That guy's mass then is 135.2 over 1. So we're going to end up, and I need four sig figs because I had four sig figs here. So that's going to be 190. 0.6, and that's going to be grams of S2Cl2. And that is my answer. So all you have to do is figure out your clouds, get rid of all but the smallest one. You can do that. All right, let's try another one. <clears throat>
phosphorus oxygen producing that. Yeah, I think I actually ended up with extra boxes on this one. Interesting. Can't get the other ones right, but I can get this one. Okay, so this is P4, they say, plus O2 is going to give me P2O5. And this is my dividing line between the two sides. All right, I got to balance this guy. Even and odd, I'm going to double the odd. So I'm going to put a two there. That's going to take care of my phosphorus issue. And then over here, I've got to put a five for the oxygen. So now I've got that balanced. Yay or nay? Figure out your moles of each one of those. And then figure out your clouds. You, you need the line shut? Even? You can shut them if you want. They, they're yours to deal with. Mm. All right, oh, 25 grams of this. What is phosphorus? 30, 31. So I'm going to take. 25 divided by 124. And that is 0.202. Remember, three sig figs in these. And then oxygen, 50 divided by 32. 1.56 and 0. How'd you do? Have you figured out your cloud yet? What? Oh, ma'am. What? I don't get it up to return to the main menu. Why didn't I just click a bunch of buttons? Well, why would it be P4 and O2? There. I just turned it off and on. Yeah, and if we're doing it in terms of P4, then it'd be O10. Well, why are you using that if you're not using Well, yeah, you I don't know about that the, one. I, still didn't I know, I know. I didn't read. Okay. I just wrote. You good? For the oxygen, why is it? Why are there less oxygen on the left side? Right, if it's I have four phosphorus here and I have four here. Nitrophosphorus. And I have ten oxygens and I have ten oxygens. Right? I have ten oxygens here and I have ten oxygens here. 
2 times 5 is 10. Yeah. 5 times 2 is 10. What's wrong with it? Oh, you did it right. Okay. Let me, me reread the question first. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I see. It's this right here. Okay. So, okay. So, this. So this you want to, we need to change that. I see what you're saying now. To this. Yes? Probably. Because they're saying that this is what we're producing. Well, the other one could work too, right? Yeah. It, well, I mean, it's going to, ch it's going to change the amount of this stuff that we would well it wouldn't in the end because it's grams and it's going to come up the same way so yeah yeah anyway it doesn't affect trying to figure out your clouds either yeah so at this point everybody's up with me right anybody not figured out their cloud yet you are not the class spokesperson Ben. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the class bully, to be honest with you. I took um, 50 and divided by 32, which is the molar mass of O2. so we're going to get rid of one of these clouds which cloud am i getting rid of the phosphorus or the oxygen cloud oxygen, oxygen. this is my i want to keep my smallest cloud so i'm going to get rid of this guy he's gone now okay and now we're just going to proceed the way we were. We're going to minus 0.202 here. We're going to minus. Now I need to take this guy. I need to multiply him by 5 before I drop him down into here. So 5 times 0.202 is 1.01. Now this will be the, the um, kind of the bellwether moment for you if you end up with a negative value here that means you picked the wrong cloud okay so if you end up with a negative value in your after section you did something wrong okay so go back and check your work at that point over here we're going to form 0.202 and then we can figure out our after lines. So this is going to be 0.55. All right. They wanted us to determine the mass of the tetraphosphorus deca oxide. So we're going to take this guy here. So we're going to take our 0 0.202. That's moles of P4. O10, and we're going to figure out grams of that. I'm going to take the mass off the periodic table, plus oxygen would be 160. So that is 284.0 and one mole. So that's going to be three sig figs gives me 57. Oops, that's not a seven. That's definitely not a seven. 
57.4, and that's grams of P4O10. So that answers A. Now we need to answer B. So B, they're asking us how much oxygen is going to be left. So we're going to take our 55 moles mm. of O2. I know that there's 32.0 grams in every one mole of O2. 0.55 times 32. I end up with 17.6 grams of O2. Yay or nay? Okay. All right. So <clears throat> we have a, one more here. I have seven minutes to get through this. And I have four blanks and four blanks up here. Good. Okay, so 6Na plus Fe2O3. And then 3Na2O and 2Fe. All right. So my, my sodium, the mass, the molar mass for that is 32.1. My mass for iron, 55.8 times 2 plus 48. So the molar mass for this, I'm trying to speed this along for you guys by giving you the molar masses of these. 159.6. This is going to be 23, 23, and 16. So this is going to be 62. And this is 55.8. So those are the molar masses. So that'll make it a little faster for you. So 100 divided by 23 is going to be 4.35 moles of this. And I've got 0. 0.627 here. Okay, so that'll get you started. See if you can finish this guy from that information. I wrote it wrong. I wrote oh. 32. It's 23. God damn it. I was thinking sulfur. Sorry, guys. You're right. This should be 23. I think I figured this out right, though. Just let me double yeah, check. No, you did, you did the math. The yep, I did that right. Okay, sorry. That That is 23. And then I took 100 and divided by 23, but I wrote sulfur's mass down for some reason. I don't know why. Who knows? Who knows what the lippy does? You're at the limiting? Yep, that one? Yep, good. You figure out which one's limiting? Nope. You divide it. 4.35 when you go up, you divide. When you come down, you multiply. It's like a family tree. You divide, right? You have fewer people at the top and the bottom. This would be the limiting one. Yep. It's the limiting one. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so it looks like most people have identified this as our limiting reactant. So, um, because if we take 4.35 and divide by 6, we end up with 0.725 here. This divided by 1 is 0.627. So, this is the cloud we're going to want to use. We're going to get rid of this one. All right. So, now I'm going to bring this down. So, 6... Um, 0.627 times 6 is, I'm going to use 3.76. Here, I'm going to use all of this up. Here, I'm going to make 1.88. And here, I'm going to make 1.25. So I'll have 0.59 moles left over. And you guys are comfortable switching these into mass. Now, your homework tonight, then, is 11.3. So you're going to practice some of these limiting reactants. 11.3, I think there's only like five or six problems. I don't think it's a real long one. So get her done. And I believe tomorrow is the last day for the hydrate lab. Stop. 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 Stop.